So the first chapter of your book is entitled Reluctant Revolution. So why is it a reluctant revolution? What are you trying to say in the first chapter of your book? Well, basically what I'm trying to say is that it's not really a revolution that anyone, especially a bishop in the church, would ever want to embark on. It, it feels like that you're attacking your faith, your tradition, and of course your God. And nobody wants to feel that nobody wants to feel like they're in that situation where they feel they have to be attacking something that, that that's been a part of their life for quite some time, ever since my birth. But with the times changing, and especially with scientific discoveries, scientific discoveries that seem to discredit Christian teachings, I felt that I had no choice. I felt that I had to be a part of this revolution in order to keep Christianity alive, to make it relevant, even in the 21st century and beyond. So it's not really a revolution that anyone would ever want to be a part of, but with the times changing and the scientific discoveries taking place on a day-to-day -day basis, and with Christianity becoming more and more irrelevant to younger people in the new generations to come, I felt that it was necessary. If we're going to keep Christianity alive, we've got to do the best we can to make absolutely sure that its teachings are relevant even to this day. Like I said, I tried to stay out of it, but I couldn't. I love Christianity so much, and it would devastate me, and I'm sure it would devastate everyone else who's a believer if Christianity ceased to exist. So that's why I took part in this reluctant revolution. And that's what I was saying in chapter one of this book. Interesting.